is fine. Good morning. Here's Wednesday Wisdom uh, here on Women of Light. And we are here with the beautiful Cynthia Nathan. And this is going to be a really interesting uh, topic because we're talking about um, pre-marriage and relationship. Um, uh, you're, a, you're a relationship counsellor, right? So Yes. Um, this is going to be really interesting because um, I've just started a new relationship. <laughs> yes, yes. Congratulations, Liz. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's, um, it's all new and it's still fun and exciting. So, um, yes. so tell us a little bit about what sort of work you do, Cynthia. It's lovely to have you on here. Oh, thank you, Liz. Thanks for having me as well. I'm so happy and excited to be here with everyone today. Yes, yeah, so I'm a relationship counsellor, a marriage and relationship educator. Um, so what I do is I help couples from the pre-marriage stage right on to, you know, a parenthood journey, which is a program called Bringing Baby Home, and then on to couple counselling sessions as and when, you know, people need that, especially, you know, with the changes that we've had. So uh, uh, pre-marriage uh, is a very important uh, stage in a young couple's life. And I've also done it with, um, you know, people who are getting remarried or, you know, blended families. And so there's no particular age group, but um, the, the, the focus is to give couples an opportunity to talk about things that they maybe would not have had the time or discussions around before. Uh, certain topics that, you know, when even people who are in love and who have been cohabiting for several years uh, may have missed that chance of, you know, having some deeper, more meaningful uh, discussions. And this is an idea to, you know, strengthen the foundation into their journey of marriage and to give them a set of skills and tools to navigate the different ages and stages that they are going to uh, face in, in marriage. As we all know, uh, it's a work in progress. <laughs> And, it's, yeah. it's it's so true right uh, yeah. I um I did some work with a woman over in America um who's mm. be, really big on this and one of the things that she constantly would say is you know we go to work uh, sorry we go to school to learn how to read and write and we you know learn exactly. um, how to function in the world to a certain degree right but yes. then we leave school and we and we might go to university to learn a, a career, yes. but no one thinks to learn the skills of financial um, wealth, you know, and relationship management, you know, like and yes. and exploration because we've all been, um, you know, brought into a world that's a bit broken. <laughs> that's right. And, yes. Yeah, and yes. and um, you know. Um, has its challenges. Our parents, obviously, you know, like would would have challenges, and there's so many people these yes. days that have been brought up in, um, you know, separated relationships, yes. and and their, yeah. ki you yeah. know, the kids' single parent families, which was yeah. in my case that was mm. what happened. Yes, and so yeah. you know, it's not something that people think of. Mm -hmm. is to learn skills on how to communicate with each other, right? Yes, yes. Because we all start off at a good place. Everyone falls in love. It's easy to fall in love and, you know, be blinded by it and, you know, get into that journey. But, you know, there's a lot of marital expectations that we may have and some individual uh, gaps that are not filled in in our childhood. Like, you know, you cover the generational impacts of trauma and there's so many other angles that come in. So this, you know, we, when we get married, we could be blessed to be married for 40 or 50 years, you know, and so love is what we start off with and we need love throughout the relationship. But then the most important thing is to survive the different ages and stages because life happens. We need a Absolutely. set of skills. Yeah. And so when you look at it, it's exactly like what you said, Liz, people plan for everything in their lives, even to run a marathon, uh, to get your driving license, to sit for exams. What more the most significant relationship of our lifetime, which is our marriage, you know, and it is an adventure. And sometimes we are not prepared for what can happen. Things can suddenly hit us. So we need to have some skills in learning how to build connection, uh, emotional attunement, to be comfortable talking about feelings and expressing them to your partner and to have an understanding of where you come from, your lenses from, you know, your early uh, 
years starting out in, in the way your family did family could be very different upbringing culture tradition interfaith yeah. yeah interfaith interracial you know all of those things impact our marriages and when we learn to do things better uh, we can weather the storms that you know are going to hit us in marriage and we know that in every relationship uh, it's not a bit of roses there's going to be uh, challenges and struggles and we all have crosses to bear in different you know areas of our of our relationship so where we start off at 25 26 we're not the same people at 50 you know and our and our growth as a couple that's a challenge it's not parallel right we have different it's, it, it's yeah. not a given right and it's yes. actually not um it's not something that um you know there's something wrong with me if i can't stay in um like connected to this man or this woman or or my partner you know whatever yes. it might be mm-hmm. and um we we need to learn like as you were saying like there's it's how many people do you hear of young couples that you hear of going really well all of a sudden have a child Yes. And and things just crumble, and next thing they can't manage the relationship because they've got this new being in the world, and um, it brings up a whole heap of other things, you know, like yes. other emotions and and yes. struggles and pressures and stuff. And yes. being able to help be in a healthy relationship that you work with together mm-hmm. is is something that you know you do need a coach or a mentor or some yes. way of working yeah. through it, right? Exactly, yeah, because the research indicates that the 72% relationship decline when they're expecting their first child. It's You get a hang of it at the second and third or, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, consecutive children. But for the first pregnancy and parenthood challenges, the transitions are huge. There are about eight different transitions. So that's why my program, Bringing Baby Home, I help couples to understand and to prepare for that journey. So it's nothing to do with um, what they learn in, in Lamas for for example, you know, about the care of the baby. This is about the care of their relationship, which is vital to the child's, uh, you know, mental health. Development and growth. and Yes, yeah. and, and emotional resilience. So, you know, uh, this is where it all starts. And it's very important because our divorce rate is very high. We are one in three couples. That's what our statistics show in Australia. And also domestic violence is, you know, very prevalent, one in five. So. Um, this is all the areas that I feel really truly believe that uh, pre-marriage education can help because people learn their influences in conflict, their patterns, and you know how can they overcome that. And it's a very thorough program that's put mm. together with over 40 years of research. So it's nothing that we pluck out from the air. It's all been researched. And I'm as, uh, as well as um, a relationship counselor, I'm trained in many different lenses. So I'm a Gottman trained couple therapist. I'm an emotionally focused trained therapist as well. So I use different modalities to help the couples to gain the best that they can uh, walking into marriage at the doorstep of marriage in, uh, for the journey of you know love, life, parenthood and beyond. So and funnily that you should say uh, what you mentioned uh, earlier, Liz, about the you know, uh, children coming from broken families. Actually, as a counsellor, that's where I started. So I started in the post-separation and divorce work, which was very tedious and very draining. And was I can very- imagine. Yeah. Yes, and, and was very sad. So with the exception of violence, I think every other marriage, given the chance and given the open-heartedness and, you know, willing to learn, they could have done something to to change their marriage. So when I worked with the groups of parents uh, in separation and with the children, uh, most of the times, very sadly, the kids blame themselves. And no matter what age you are, you could be in your 50s and if your parents were to divorce, it still has an impact on us, you know? So so I think the strength-based, future-focused techniques and evidence-based, research-based and all of that put together uh, it really gives them a toolkit into uh, learning how to manage the different, uh, you know, problems that can crop up in different ages and stages uh, and development of their relationship. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and and you know, these days, um, you know, in in our parents' day, it was um, 
it wasn't spoken of. There was no skills. Yeah. There was no um, opportunity to get counselling, marriage counselling, all of those things. Um, and so, you know, we're really blessed that, yes. you know, there's, yes. there's, a, there's a need and has been fulfilled in the community by um, these sort of services and, and um, techniques coming out, you know, which, yes. is, which is so good. It's true, so, yes. Because no one has a framework for marriage, really. Our no. parents do the best they can and yeah. they are our first role models. So many things we learn from them and we look at how they've done things. Uh, and then basically you have young people coming in today with the lens of Hollywood. So <laughs> the yes. expectation is the wedding is a big celebration. It's a big party. Yes, we live our lives for, you know, we look forward to our wedding day. But then the journey of marriage. So we actually have to help people to realize that from the big day, there is a bigger picture. And that bigger picture involves work. And it's a constant work in progress. And, you know, it's the it takes two people to tango and to get the best out of what your marriage has to offer, the relationship satisfaction and the fulfillment. You can achieve that with just little tweaks that we do, you know, uh, on a daily basis for each other. And, you know, how do you prioritize uh, in, in such a busy world, in a digital age that we are living in, you know, these are all little challenges that come about. And when couples call it quits, it's really sad if they haven't given themselves a, an opportunity to save the marriage which there are many ways to do that yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> and it's so true right um getting you know our our um society is not conducive to um healthy strong bonds between men and women that yeah. that are long term these days yeah. um you know the the things that we're watching the hollywood you know scene <laughs> of you know you know, falling in love and 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 you know having a big marriage and wedding and then um, and then divorcing within you know months or whatever is is seen yes. as the norm. Yes. And it's focused on, as you said, like that that big celebration is focused on, and then yeah. oh, what happens after that? So yes. people yes. are going through the the, the process, you know, yes. and not actually being conscious of well, what do I really want out of this relationship and and what am I um, giving to the relationship as well, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah, so there's a lot of give and take. There's a lot of compromise. The transition from me to we. Also, you know, you have to talk about decision making and leadership roles also change. And, you know, I think each one of us, if we can invest in ourselves to do some work, because uh, as the saying goes, you know, from one of my favorite authors, uh, she, she says that uh, when I'm a better me, we are a better we. So you yes. know, when you do some work on ourselves before that and then do some work together and it's, you know, in a very interactive manner, the pre-marriage program is put across. So actually people who come in and do that, they in the evaluations, they, they give glowing evaluations because they didn't know what to expect. But when they're actually there, they say, wow, the sessions were jam-packed with full of information. You know, I feel more equipped to start off my marital journey. At least I know what to expect. Because as you said, they could come from broken families, they could have been adopted, they could have been fostered. There are a lot of variations to the lens of attachment that they bring in. And, and yeah. yeah, and not only that, I, I'm just sitting here thinking about, um, you know, the different roles that men and women play in society yeah. and what we've been conditioned to believe, you know, like the, the feminist, I, I speak about this on a regular basis, you know, the, okay. the feminist movement was absolutely needed. We we needed to get some sort of um, sovereignty back into our life where we are, you know, predominant creative forces in our life and we, we got to vote and, and have our children when we, you know, when our partner died and all of those things yes. to to step forward and and yes. be seen as as equal humans mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but um what happened as the generations moved on this um you know power over and we have to do everything and women are now like in this overwhelm of we've got to have the career we've got to have the children we've got to have the perfect marriage we've got to yes. um financially support yes. the family and mm -hmm. and the men are like where are we and what, what are we supposed to be doing? And yeah. so in that in that societal, like that 
that's this, yeah. you know, the structure that, that yes. society has unconsciously created. It's not something that it, yes. you know, like it just happened as it went along. Yes, um, that's right. We're all floundering. And right. so yeah. even if you've been brought up in a healthy, um, you know, family structure, yeah. um, society is, you know, like how do you find working with men and women to understand where they sit with their roles as well? Have you yes. noticed, you know, like, you know, yeah. finding that that ability yes. to to become equals in a in a more healthy fashion yes that's right so we do cover uh, uh, lots of activities and one of them is relationship roles uh, which is very important because we could have seen uh, a father cooking and a mother mowing a lawn and so when you come into your marriage and that's your expectations but what's your what's your partner's family what did that look like and what is your expectation coming into the marriage so all of this we talk about and that's why i call my company 3r counseling it actually stands for relationship reality and the responsibility of marriage. I love that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, you know, uh, so I, I was lucky that in the sense that it was a calling for me to do this work because I, when I was working in the other uh, sectors, um, I, I was very happy with the work that I was doing, but then there came um, a redundancy because of the, um, you know, uh, reorganization of the funding, uh, the government funding, and then I had lost my job, and then there was a calling to open my own practice, and that's how 3R Counseling was born five years ago, and uh, so I've had hundreds of couples walk through, and uh, I also provide the Zoom sessions as well, so, you know, people can, uh, interstate couples are also welcome to do the pre-marriage program, and I send the material out to them, so I could either uh, email it or post it, and these are all the little things, thorough things that we take them through, and then they really feel uh, sort of lighthearted, because they say that we never thought to, you know, uh, talk about these things and what happens if and what happens then and you know so it gives an opportunity for discussion in a safe space and I guide them into the skills that are taught so it's a lot of education that's why it's called pre-marriage education I wouldn't really call it counseling but then because I'm a trained counselor when anything comes up for them if there's something deep you know and dark and they need to process it then I'm trained to help them to do that but generally they are there to get a skill set and uh, to know how to, you know, uh, use it in, in a daily small, it, the motto is small things often. So we're not asking them to, uh, you know, uh, plan these huge trips to Hawaii or, you know, to, uh, <laughs> to plan a penthouse staycation, nothing of that sort. It's small little affordable things, but I always tell them it comes with intention and effort. So you're talking about 15 minutes a day because many couples after the big wedding day, they fall into a process of disillusionment. You know, it's like things that they never thought that this is what I've signed up for and where do we go from here? What now, you know? So there is, yeah. That, yeah, there is that sense of backslide and a little bit of a disappointment. So we don't want you to have that. So we want to help them to realize that there's so much more and how we, we talk about goals, we talk about shared meanings. There's a lot of things, uh, the work that is done uh, so that they have a better understanding. And also we cover angles of digital uh, usage because lots of couples are going through uh, you know, problems with the digital age at this point of time. Where yeah, they, wow. Stuff yeah, we they, never had to think about, right? Right. <laughs> so it's a completely different realm, you know, that they are dealing with today. And I, I've been married 24 years. And uh, so I've got uh, older kids and uh, I know that the challenges, I've been through the mill myself in my, my wedding, I mean, my marriage as well. So, you know, people think you're a marriage counselor, you, you will be, you know, happy all the time. I said, no, it's still work. I still have oh, to yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Yes, and you practice what you preach, you know. So I tell yeah. them come in and do a couple checkup yearly, as how you would do a, a blood uh, checkup or a medical checkup. Come in and and you know stop and take stock of your relationship, how far you've come along, what else you'd like to do, and so you'll be held accountable in the presence of uh, you know me. So when you go back, you'll say, oh, remember the time we went to see Cynthia and we talked about this, you know. So there's a accountability factor there, and uh, I love I, that. Yes, and so I do that 
that. I do that with my spouse and uh, we make sure because we are at different, you know, stages and uh, we have a 20 year old and an 18 year old and they are going through their own things. And then recently there was a death in the family and I couldn't get back for my, uh, it was my mom. I couldn't get back for her funeral and uh, because we were in lockdown and lock in as well, you know, so mm. all of these challenges and spouses need to learn how they can, um, best support each other through those trials in life and sometimes it doesn't come naturally to people because men and women we are so different and we are wired very differently we have different needs you know and things like that so uh, going to you know do a check-in is it's important because it just gives a fresh perspective a way of looking into things that friends and family cannot in their even if they wanted to because there'll be you know emotional bias attached to it so uh, uh, coming to see a neutral third party like a counselor can help you to process these things and so this is very important so right mm. on from, yeah from the pre-marriage right on yeah. yeah and and not only um you know to to have a, a neutral party but Someone that can maybe see behind, you know, stuck behind the blinders and yes. things that you may not be able to see, which is the same with mentoring and coaching in business yes. and health and all the other things that that are starting to become more of a norm. Yes. You know, um, if, if we're going to create the life we love, we, we do need to have someone to have that support with and, yes. and you know, guide us through and... Yes. Um, be able to share their skills with so um that's so good Cynthia it sounds um lovely and I love the sort of work you do it's so important and I can imagine you know there's so many people that I know from clients um as well um yeah. that really really struggled uh through the the whole COVID lockdown stuff and and I yes. you know it was yes. crazy it was crazy wasn't it not being Very able to bad. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it certainly played a number on most relationships and there's an increase in, in divorce, there's an increase in violence, there's an increase in suicide, there's yeah. an increase in infidelity. So all the serious things are, are happening in this last two years. Yeah, so it, it's a very sad time, but then I like to assure people that there are ways out of it if they're willing to do the work and if they're willing to learn, you know, we can rebuild, we can reconnect and we can, you know, um, definitely help them to to have a, a better relationship moving forward yeah yeah that's so good I'm so um pleased to have you on Cynthia because you know it's important work right and and yes. um it's an important time to you know yes. if you're struggling uh in your relationship yes. then please reach out Cynthia is gonna you're going to put your details in the the thread so yes. that we can um share yes. the information and I'm assuming you have you know, you're okay with talking to people about the, the sort of work you do and doing a free yeah. chat to start with, yeah? Yes, definitely. So there's a clarity call, no, no problem. They can call me and get more information. Uh, I can email them certain things as well. So then they can decide because I, couples need to realize, especially when there's children involved, you know, uh, your couplehood impacts your family. And yes. you know, if you have a happy family, you have a happy community, you have a happy society and, you know, things move on from there. So couplehood is really the, the foundation tool for all families. And when I work with, uh, with couples, I, I use a lens of a child in focus. So the work I'm doing for them, the repair, the reconnecting, the rebuilding of the relationship, the long term goal is for the child in the picture. So yes, that is the, yeah. that's the lens, yeah. So yeah, yeah, that's beautiful, and and so important for the next generation, right? So yes, we need to shift this so that we can get those numbers down. Yes, exactly right. <laughs> yeah, True. thank you so much, Cynthia. It was lovely having you on. Thank you, Elizabeth, for for uh, you know uh, inviting me to this morning's uh, wisdom call. Thanks so much. <laughs> Take care. Thank, thank you. you all for watching. Bye.